Hello, hello, hello. This is your Captain Panic speaking. And welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. So I kind of took a very long nap and didn't record any tutorials recently. And that has a lot of reasons. And one reason is that I just needed a break. And it's very, very important to take breaks sometimes. Um, yes, and there are two things I want to mention before we get started. And one thing is thank you for all the support, the nice messages, the really nice feedback and yeah, basically every kind act. <laughs> I'm really, really thankful for that and I really do appreciate it and I really, really, really love the word really. <laughs> and yes, thank you. Um, and now it's uh, getting a little bit difficult for me because I need to say something negative or like something that really bothered me and has been another reason why I didn't record anything in the recent past and that's um, getting some, not a lot, but some very rude messages um, about my tutorials not being good enough in a professional way I think. I, I don't really get it and I want go too deep into that but I really do appreciate feedback and constructive criticism but I really don't appreciate very rude messages questioning my place in the tutorial area because I really do think everybody belongs here everybody can share something everybody has a lot of good things to show and I would love everybody to do so um, because that's mutual support is what gets us further and not being mean and disrespectful about any sort of skill levels or anything. So yes, I don't know if you got my point, but please stay kind is the first and most important thing and please don't let anybody ever question your place. You belong here and it's very, very good. <laughs> uh, okay, that was a little bit difficult, but now um, I will calm down and we will get started. So in the background, you can already see what we are going to create today, which is a setup I made inspired by Lumen prints. Um, I can show you some references I used for this. So these are all Lumen prints I found on the internet. And I think Lumen print is a analog technique in photography. That's how I would call it. And it's basically you put something on a reactive, light reactive paper and everywhere the light gets through. Um, it gets white and if you put something on it which has different levels of transparency and the longer you leave it in the sun um, the more different layers you will get and that's how I also approached approached this setup and yeah I really enjoy those different layers of transparency the different um, amount of sharpness, like we have some very sharp details and then some very blurry areas, um, which gives us a great ways to expand this and make it more abstract, more colorful or anything. So I really, really love this. So I really wanted to show hi, hi. <laughs> I really wanted to say hi. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I really wanted to show how I approach this lumen print technique in touch designer um, yes 
And also I wanted to make it a little bit more dynamic um, and audio reactive. So we will also cover a little beat detection I made in this tutorial, which we will then use to change the input for our setup. So I will play it now. Um, attention, there will be music. Don't be scared. Um, yeah, so we use the beat to change the input and we also use the beat to change the color. Um, yes, um, what else to say? Um, as always, you can find the project files of this setup on my Patreon. Um, yes, <laughs> that's it. Um, let's get started and I will see you on my screen. Hello, welcome on my screen and let's get started. Um, so first of all, what we will need is input images. Um, I am using some rendered images of flowers in my case. Um, so they are very much plain and inspired by some scans. So you could also search a flower on a field or like some grass or basically anything you can find which you find interesting, which you would also put on a paper and make a lumen print out of it. Um, so the only thing that is important is that it's transparent. It has um, a transparent background and it's really nice if it has some kind of light areas and dark areas with a lot of detail, I think. Also, same for this, it has some nice shapes and here we have some nice details as well. Um, so I am using three different images. I really recommend using more than one um, because we will switch between those and when you switch it leaves a mark on the other image which will give it more depth and more details basically. So please use more than one image. Um, yes. Um, and also please make sure that they have the same format. Um, like those are all square. Um, it really saves you some troubles afterwards and some annoying extra notes as well. So. Let them have the same format and then you're good to go. So um, then I will create a switch mm. and I will put all three in the switch. And after the switch I am making a fit um, so I can control the resolution more easy. Um, I am going with a 2K format, like this one. Um, if you don't have the commercial version, you need to adapt this to your limited resolution. Um, I recommend using the highest resolution, which lets you play the animation at 60 or 30 frames, um, because if the resolution is higher, you also actually achieve, <laughs> achieve achieve um, better looks with more details and less blurriness and everything. Um, okay, um, then I don't want to use any of the color my image has, so I am using a monochrome after it, which I will just keep on default, so we just have a monochrome image. And then I will create a null to um, close our first step. Um, then um, we will create our first feedback loop 
and we will do that by creating a cop after this and give us some space over here and change the operation mode from multiply to screen and then we will also out of that null create a feedback and this feedback um, we want to be able to reset it so we also make a keyboard in And then we will make the viewer active so we can export this reference. And then we just hold on here and drag it onto the pulse. So now when every time we hit the key one on our keyboard, we reset our feedback right now. We can't really see anything going on because our feedback is not active yet. So we need to connect our feedback to this comp again, and then you, we are using this comp as our reference layer so for the feedback. So we just take it and drag it onto the feedback and let it go. And now we want to see what's going on in the background. So I will connect this null, add this comp, excuse me, to another null, which I will give some space as well. And then I will make the display here active. So just hit the blue circle and then we have our image in the background. All right. Right now we can't really see a lot. Um, um, but we are already getting a silhouette of this. Now we want to be able to give this some blurry areas and some sharp areas. And we will do that by using a Luma Blur. So a Luma Blur is really, really a very, very cool component. Um, and it basically lets you blur different areas on the image. So in this setup, we will use a noise and then we use this feedback as our first input to set the resolution of this noise to the same resolution we are using everywhere else. Um, and then in the output, we set this to noise because I don't want our image comped into this. So we just want this plain noise. And then we use this as the second input of our Luma Blur. And then you already can see what this does. So based on the different colors, black and white, we get different um, levels of blurriness. So in this case, we are using the white areas to blur. Like everywhere we have white on this noise, it gets blurred. And the gray areas get less blurred and the black areas don't get blurred. Um, yes, <laughs> so now we make some changes in that noise. Um, like you can play with those different parameters. I will just show the ones that I used, which is a period of three, harmonics four, and I put the amplitude quite high to 1.23. And I set the offset to zero. And also um, I changed the seed um, to some random number. And um, what else did I do? Um, uh, yeah, the most important thing is to animate that noise because um, we want our setup to be animated and the und and those blurry areas to change. So um, under our translate tab, we just under the set axis we just type apps time dot seconds multiplied with 
0 0.1 so it's really smoothly moving and now you can see our blurry areas change and now we have the problem that once everything is blurred everything is blurred so of course we need to bring in a level at the end of our feedback um, i want this level to be the last operator in the feedback loop um, which happens after every other operator so i put it at last and in this i will set the opacity under post to 0.995 <laughs> I always tend to say null point because uh, the null objects um, and I mess it up in my brain and forget that it's actually called zero <laughs> so I'm sorry about that um, yes and now every time we hit one we reset it and now you can see we get some blurry areas and then after a while the blurry areas fade and some other areas get blurred and so on. Nice. Um, Alright. Um, but another thing I find quite important is that I feel like those edges are a little bit too sharp. So before our Luma blur in between the feedback and the luma blur we will bring in another blur which we will bring down to a filter size of 2 so it's just really really very slightly blurred and still has a lot of contrast to the luma blur and then I want to expand the luma blur because right now it's all a little bit mushy and I don't want that so I will just set the filter size to 25 so we yes we really get this glowy and nice effect and then I realize I forgot something which is very important in this fit in the beginning we need to set the pixel format to 32-bit float um, because a better filter form a pixel format just gives us way more detail and nicer um, shades so this is very important please set the pixel format to 32 bit float okay then let's give us some more space because now i want some more detail and some more blurry movements like just like you put something on the paper of the lumen print and then you accidentally move it and then it gives you this really nice movement blur motion blur and we achieve that by making a displays after it which we will set in the displays weight to 0.002 or zero one maybe even it's just it depends just play around with those parameters and then we will create another noise using this one as the reference for the resolution change the output to noise only and connect it and then you can already see that we get some really nice different um, kind of motion blur and of course we also want this to be animated so type in apps time dot seconds multiplied with 0 0.1 and then we want to set this noise to a non-monochrome like we want color here because this gives us different directions for the displacement to move and then we will make some changes to the settings of the noise. So in this example, I used a period of two, harmonics three, and 
I set the amplitude to 0 0.15 and this basically controls the amount of the distortion like when or the speed I don't know um, like if we set this higher it gets into the this shape really fast and if we keep it really low it stays slower and smoother so play around with the amplitude as well here it's really nice okay cool um that's basically it with this feedback so if you want to achieve different looks just change the period here change the harmonics make this smaller or bigger however you want to use it um like yeah that's up to you i used those parameters and <laughs> yeah customized them um all right so now we have the overall shape we want our um, lumen print to be um, but now i want to create those different levels of transparency or the look of different layers of transparency um, so i made a lot of comping and basically it's like post-production or anything like setting levels and trying different um, composition styles or anything so yes um, so first thing i will do is create oops another oh my god <laughs> here are my mails yay um excuse me um all right let's make a comp after this comp and then we will comp this with our input images again so i will make a select and i want to use this one like the null before our feedback and just drag it here and then you have it as a reference then bring it over here again and then comp this in here and set the operation mode to over and bring the cell up cell up select over the comp and now we want some blurry areas on this image as well like we have our um, different areas here and now we want them onto this thing we comped over it as well so we make another luma blur and we will also use the same reference here we used here so we will make another select drag this noise in here and then bring it in as the second input of the luma blur and now an opposite to our feedback loop we will make the black areas blurry and keep the white areas sharp so just the opposite like we did before so right now it's set to one and now we set the black filter width to 25 and yes now you can see that this gives us some really nice and satisfying movement to look and also some really enjoyable moments <laughs> of detail and blurriness and sharpness and everything um, yes so really already enjoying this and but i want even more burned out white areas like where a little bit too much of white is going on i don't know it, i in the process of creating this i found this very pleasuring to look at so i am making a mat after this so what the mat does is it creates 
different layers which are comped into each other or it uses this one, the first input, it puts it on top of the second input with a mask. Um, basically just like in the Luma Blur where it blurs black areas and keeps white areas sharp, it puts it onto it by using a mask, a color mask. <laughs> so I, I said this way too complicated, so I will just show you. So in this case, we will use this comp, put over those white areas, based on a noise again. So use this one again as the reference for the resolution, set this output mode to noise only, and then put this in through the mat input. Then we will change this mat channel to luminance because we wanted light areas and dark areas. And then we will make some changes to this noise. So in my case, I set the period to one, the harmonics to zero, um, and the offset to 3.8. And then, of course, we will animate this under the transform tab. We will just type apps time dot seconds multiplied by 0 0.1 again. <laughs> and then change the seat as well. And now you can see um, that we also have a movement in the burned out white areas which gives us even more levels of transparency so basically what i just did here is making a lot of comps which gives us different looks which we then comp over each other to get as many different looks as possible so you could just repeat this another time with different settings of levels like yes um, but I just kept it in this. Um, well, I didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I forgot that I didn't. Um, after this mat, again, I made a comp. And again, I put this, this comp two, combined with this mat. And then I set this to maximum. So it just uses the max white areas to comp it over each other like you could also try different settings here like the difference might be interesting as well or that yeah maybe the add is a little bit too much but minimum is also very much interesting um, because it uses the dark areas only so minimum maximum are very interesting to play with in the final result so i just keep it on max but keep that in mind that this is very interesting here as well. All right. Um, now we will get into some colorways and colors. Um, so I created a noise after this and this time I'm using this as the second input as well. And then under the output I set this to noise only and then let's make some changes to this noise. So first of all, I put down the harmonics. And then I set the period to 8. And I left everything else on default. And I did that because I wanted to get even more different shades. So if you play around with this and the period, you get even more different levels. Um, I kept it at 8, but also play around with this one. And then afterwards <laughs> I made another noise. <laughs> Let's just copy this noise and use it like this. Combine this and then in this, this time I turned off the monochrome so I get some colors and 
then I comped it again with the black areas. So it really gives us a very nice look and then in here you could also um, play around again of course. Um, but I, I will keep it like this now. Maybe we can use some more pleasuring colors, I'm not sure um, which one to use. I will use the same as we used before in my reference. So we'll just, yes, just like this. That's very nice. Um, and right now it's a little bit too dark for my taste. Um, and that is either because um, this is not a complete white background, so if you set a level here and turn up the brightness, you get a way brighter background, which is very nice. So feel free to change settings in this level. And another thing is if we want to have a custom background, we could do that by making a select using this again, like drag this in here, and then we could make an inside after this and use this one. And basically what this does, it, it puts this one inside of this, like inside of the alpha channel of this. Um, and then you could just use a constant after this, where you change the output operation mode to uh, I don't know, over? Okay, no, it's under. And then you could just use a different color here. So it's more clean and a little bit more, I don't know, easy to handle. <laughs> All right. Um, or what you also could do is create a noise again, of course use this one as the reference layer and then just pull up, I don't know, the period and the scale to something like this and then just um, use a comp or let's use an over instead. Just use the over, put this under it and yes. Maybe then turn off monochrome, I don't know, pull down the amplitude, pull up the offset, and then you could just um, have different colors here. Yay! <laughs> um, all right. Um, but I won't go to, too deep into those uh, different color options because I really just want to show the technique. And as you might notice, we are not finished yet, because now we will make this audio reactive. And you might remember this, we want to switch our inputs, because that's the way we get those very nice blurry um, areas, which are fading here, and it gives us way more details and looks overall. All right. Um, so let's do that. So um, first of all, we will create our beat component now. So I created this component um, like this one. And we will just recreate it like um, we make an audio file in and when you could see it, um, yeah, maybe put the volume down here and it's not working. Why isn't it working? All right. Um, it wasn't working because I set down the the volume of this and you need to have the volume at one. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's it. So, but now we will recreate this beat detection. So we'll delete it. And 
Yes. So what we will do is we will create a null and then we will create another null. <laughs> Ooh. And then we will just select both of those null objects, hit the right click to collapse selected. And then we get a component, which we will then call, I don't know, beat. And then we'll just zoom in here. And yes, now let's go. So first of all, we need an in, um, which will create a possibility to input something into our component and then we will create an out so we also get something out of our component okay so um, what we will put in is our audio file so we'll just use the audio file in and keep it at the default touch designer um, audio file and then I will just plug this in here and then we have this in our network. Um, then we want to hear what's going on. So we will make an audio device out and just connect it. And then we'll turn down the volume immediately because it's way too loud for me. <laughs> um, yes. So please make sure you can turn down the volume in the audio device out, but please don't turn it down in the audio file in because then the um, channels are a little bit disrupted. Okay, so I will actually nearly turn down the complete sound because it kind of distracts me, but I still need to see if it's running. So, okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to reduce it from two channels to a mono channel because we don't need two channels. So I will make a math and I will set the combined channels to average. All right. Um, then I will use an audio filter um, to smooth this curve a little bit and to get it a little bit more clean. So I will just use the audio filter and also I keep it on low pass but I change this to frequency. And then I will set the filter cut off to 180 and to 20 in the roll off. Mm. So we still get um, where our um, channel or our sound is um, getting higher or lower or the beat, you know what I mean. <laughs> After the audio filter, I will use an analyze. Uh, where is it? There it is. And I set the function to RMS power. Um, all right. Um, then after this, we will set a math again. And this math is the will be the thresh threshold, um, which gives you a little bit more control of when a beat gets detected. Just like um, in any image where you can set a threshold based on light and dark areas, we will create a threshold which lets you say, okay, I want my beat detected here, but not here. <laughs> no, that's my most professional way of saying that. And to do that, I will make a constant here, which I will just call threshold. And then I will set it to um, 
null point four in this example, but this is just based on the touch designer default f sound. If you want to use your own sound, you might need to adapt this a little bit. And then I will just export this onto the pre-add here. And then I want to invert this, like the th threshold in here should be minus 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So we'll just put a minus in front of the expression. All right. Um, you could, of course, also type that in here, but I want to um, make a component later with um, different sliders on the component, which makes it more easier to control, and that's why I decided to go with this constant. All right. So then, after this math, we will use a logic. Um, and this basically puts everything into null or one, which we need in, it's like on off. And you can decide when you want it off or on. And we just keep it on default on off when zero or less. And then afterwards, we will make a trigger. Where is it? There it is. And in this trigger, um, we set the uh, basically nearly everything <laughs> to zero, like the attack length in attack to zero, um, the decay length in sustain to zero, the sustain level also to zero, and the release length also to zero. The only thing we set a little bit higher is the re-trigger delay, which I set to null point zero point four, um, or maybe maybe let's use it as zero point one. This is basically when it gets re-triggered, like a little delay, so it's not pushing too fast. So you can adapt this a little bit to your liking as well. And then I also brought in a filter afterwards. And this filter um, I set to zero. <laughs> um, but I just brought it in because sometimes I don't want, I want something to react on a beat, but I wanted to fade a little bit and not to be zero or one. Um, so I use this filter where I can decide, okay, let's sm smooth it a little bit. All right. But right now we will just keep it on zero or turn it off completely. And then afterwards, because I don't want this to be called channel one, I will just make a rename and change it from channel one to something like beat. All right. Cool. And that's basically the component. So now we have our component here, which gives us the beat. But now we want to have some settings on the beat, which we will also cover here. So we will hit right click onto our component and hit customize component. So now we want to add a page on here, like where you can see base, extensions and common, we will create our own page and which we will call custom, oops, custom settings. So I'll just add the page. And now you can see we added the page. And now on this page, we want to add some parameters. So here under pair name, which stands for parameter, I will make a threshold which we will keep on float. This is the type of um, slider. So add this parameter and now you can see we have a slider here. And we will also add the filter. All right, cool. Um, so now we want this to be a reference for something. So we get back in here 
And first of all, we will take this threshold, threshold constant and uh, copy the parameter, zoom out again. We can close this um, and just paste bind onto the threshold. So paste bind. And then we will repeat that for the filter width here, copy parameter and paste bind. So now if we just turn this on, if we set this to something like one, and there you can see we changed the filter width in this component without going in and out every time. So if you set this lower, yes, you, you see what I mean. <laughs> and we keep this at zero and I will also turn it off so it's not uh, bringing down any performance or anything. All right, and that's basically it. Now we finished our component here. Um, you can save this to your palette and reuse it in any other project. All right, um, cool. Um, now I will show you how I use this to change the image here. So we will make a null here and now we will add some more operators to this. So the first one is, is account. Um, because we have one, two, three images and they all have a different index. So on the zero index, our first image is then our under index one, we find this image and on two, we find this image. So basically, if we have three inputs for the switch, we need this counter to be able to count to two and then reset to zero. So we will just under the count here, we will change the count limit to loop min max and this way it counts in this case to 10 and then it starts again. So maybe let's reset this one, two, three, four. Yes. And then when we hit 10, we get back. In our case, we want only three images, which count to an index of two. So we change the limit maximum to two. So it counts one, two, null. Y you get it. <laughs> Um, perfect. Okay. And then we can use this one, this null here and export it onto the index. So now you can see we are already counting through. Um, right now it's very stiff and it just pam pam pam. <laughs> And if you want this to be a little bit smoother, you can bring in a filter after this. And just if right now the filter width is set to one second. So we have one second of smoothing or it smooths like one second. So the transition takes a second. So in my case, I set this to 0 0.25. So like a, a quarter second. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. Um, but it's a little bit smoother. I just enjoyed a little bit more. Um, but you, you don't need this. You can just use it like this. All right. Um, and then the second thing we want to change is the color, which we also want to change on the the beat and what I will do is just copy this um, but turn off the limit in this count. So right now for this, for the color changing, we just want this to count endlessly, like forever. <laughs> and then we want to use this null on the transform of our colorful noise. All right. 
So we just export this onto the set axis here, chop the reference, and then it changes on every beat. And once again, this filter decides how long the transition between the colors will take. So you can just set this to one and then it takes a little bit longer. Um, but there's another way of smoothing those colors out. Because right now, in the noise, in the color tab, it just adds one to the transform. So the transform is quite high in a short time. And if we want to have this step a little bit smaller, like we don't want to count one plus one plus one. So instead we want to count 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. And we could just do that by adding a math in here and changing the range instead of to range 0 1, we could just type 0 0.1 Oops, like this. And then the step is smaller. Voila. Um, yes, then of course you could also use this on your background noise. So the background changes its color as well. And yes, um, <laughs> that's it basically. If you, oh yeah, another thing I can show is if you don't want this to be this colorful thing, you could also just use, oops, um, like this white thing, or you could also make this all white. Um, by using a constant with the operation mode inside here. So you just have this white areas um, without those gray areas. And you could also, of course, um, make this a negative form. I don't know, um, whatever you, you want to use. Um, change the color here so it's more like a how it's called, a cyan cyanotype, <laughs> I don't know, it's also a form of analog printing and yes, that's also a very enjoyable look. Um, so that's it with the tutorial, it's, it took a while, even though it's not a very techy and very professional coding thing. Um, instead, it's very visual and very much post-processing, but I still find it very pleasurable and I wanted to show how it works and I hope you enjoy it as well. And I hope you uh, enjoy your day as well after you completed this tutorial with this groundbreaking cool look. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and have a nice day. Stay kind and bye-bye.